What's up guys? It was cloudy all day today until literally right now, but we're still gonna make chili because it's fall and it's a cozy food to eat. This one's gonna be high protein. We're gonna do kind of our spin on it. We're gonna keep it a little bit less fat than usual. We're gonna be using ground beef from Barstow Country Butchering, which is where I got my last what do you call it? Steers worth of beef. So we've got regular ground beef here. Then these are jalapeno beef patties that they had. These ones got a little bit messed up by the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and just call them what they are, ground beef, and use them to substitute, <laughs> not substitute, but uh, add to our regular ground beef over here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna throw them in the pan behind me, let them start getting brown, and we'll start cutting up our vegetables and explaining what we got going on over here. Pop all these bad boys into the pot. I'm just gonna let the patties go for a minute by themselves, let them get brown, and then in the meantime, we'll cut up some bell pepper. We'll just go for like half inch dices, like half inch squares. So I'm just gonna cut them into strips like this first. And then once we've got all these strips, turn them sideways. And like I said, just shoot for like about a half inch square. We got these chopped up. Now we gotta check on our patties. Oh, they got brown, something fierce. Didn't check on them soon enough. Since we're not trying to cook the meat fully, give it a nice sear, pull it out, and then we'll add the ground beef. Barstow Country Butchering. If you guys are in Southern California and you need beef, hit these guys up, dude. There's their contact info. Super premium beef. They work with a lot of great ranches in Southern California. They'll hook you up. Part of the reason we're going down with the beef first is so we can render some fat out. That way we've got something to cook our vegetables in. But I'm not gonna use like some recipes that call for bacon or lard to cook the vegetables in. We'll just use a little bit of the fat that comes off of the beef. So we need a yellow onion too. This is not how I would recommend cutting up onions. I kind of messed it up. You're supposed to leave the butt on. It makes it easier to cut up, but we'll do our best here. Once again, you're shooting for those half inch cubes, something like that. Just get them cut up. Onions done, now the garlic. We're gonna use, what do we got? Five, six cloves here. When you whack your garlic with your knife, try not to obliterate the clove. <laughs> Leave yourself something to chop. Or if you whack it hard enough, it kind of eliminates the need to chop it at all. Okay, that's good enough. There we go, nice brown on it. So we'll pull the beef out now, and then we can start cooking our vegetables. We'll start with the onions, let these sweat down, turn a little bit translucent. We'll add the bell peppers before too long, but we're gonna wait to add the garlic until everything else is pretty much done. We'll add the garlic and the spices right before we put everything back in the pot. The bell peppers are just barely starting to get translucent. Now is a good time to add the bell pepper. Did I say the bell peppers? Darn it. Well guys, you know what I mean. The onions are starting to get translucent. We add the bell peppers. The look she just shot me, she's all, you screwed up. <laughs> oh well. All right, so we'll let these go for a little bit and then we'll add the garlic, we'll add the spices so that they can toast a little bit before we add in the beef stock, the tomato paste, all the good things. Oh yeah. This is when you kind of got to sit back and chill, dude, and don't rush it. I think a lot of people like to rush cooking, but color equals flavor. So we're really going to let these things get some color on them, cook down just like we did for the meat, not rushing anything. And that's what's going to make it bomb. We're about to add the garlic. We're going to add all the spices, which are going to be in the description. I'm not going to list them here because think I would make you guys bored. There's a lot of them. It's time. I'm gonna make a little hole in the middle. Let me get my garlic. Careful not to let it burn, but just let it get nice and fragrant. It's gonna take like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Time for the spices. If you let these toast a little bit, it's gonna open it all up, help the flavor out that much more. We'll add the tomato paste as well. Let that cook down for a sec. 
This is homemade beef stock that I rendered the other day. I made a, a nice batch of shredded beef with some chuck roast, also from Barstow Country Butchering. And then I made sure to save the beef stock so that I could use it for something like this. You guys are making shredded beef like from any of my other recipe videos. Keep the beef stock, use it for your chili. The beef is gonna go back in. Worcestershire sauce, brown sugar, two cans of diced green chilies, two cans of chili beans, diced tomatoes, fire roasted diced tomatoes, and the rest of the beans that didn't come out the first time. Give it a mix. Bring it to a boil and then just let it simmer for a couple hours. You guys are gonna have a badass, very beefy chili on your hands. And this is a super quick meal to make. I've only been cooking for like 20 minutes. Like, it's a super easy dinner. You could even throw all the ingredients in a crock pot and just hit go, go to town. Come home a couple hours later and you'll have dinner done. If you wanted to take it to work in a thermos, you could, you could use this for meal prep. I mean, there's so many different things. It's very versatile. It's super clean. You could even add up, like if you're using a pound of ground beef, let's say, and one can of pinto beans, whatever, you could add everything into MyFitnessPal, divide it up into eight servings, and then you know the exact macros for each serving. Uh, there's so many things you could do with this. It's super easy. It's delicious. Highly recommend it. These are some of our family's favorite toppings when it comes to chili. We like a little yellow onion, jalapeno, lime, you can use avocado, some shredded cheese. We'll even do Greek yogurt in place of sour cream. I'm gonna get these prepped up while the chili finishes simmering. Just gotta take it and make it yours, you know? I usually do a little bit of onion. Me and my wife really love, oh, what is it called? Cayenne pepper, add a little bit of spice. You can even add some hot sauce, some Cholula, some Tapatio, always extra salt. Me and my wife are like salt fiends. Put tons of salt on everything we eat. Let's dress up a bowl, shall we? Grab the big ladle here. The longer we let this simmer too, the thicker it's gonna get. I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to fit my exact macros or yours, so use your discretion here, but this is how I'm gonna dress it up right now. I love me a dollop of Greek yogurt on there. Do a little bit of onion. Presentation is half of the taste, so make it look good. A little bit of cheese. Not in my macros. That's why we're gonna keep adding it and adding it. A couple of jalapenos in case it's not spicy enough already. With those jalapeno beef patties that we put in there. A little bit of cilantro and we'll top it off with some lime. Oh, and, and I mentioned that my wife and I are salt fiends. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of a flaky salt to finish it off. There you have it guys. That is my rendition of chili. I hope you guys enjoy it. Try it, let me know what you think of it. Perfect weather for it. We're getting into, ow, it's so hot. We're getting into fall. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next one. Please like and subscribe if you dug this video. I'll be back with more soon. Thank you guys a lot. See you on the next one.